and welcome to Delightful, Delicious, De Lovely. My name is Christina Lees, and today I am going to be making an Indian sag paneer. Sag paneer is basically a, almost a pureed um, spinach, in, sag means spinach, um, with spices, Indian spices, and cheese. Paneer is cheese. Um, I'm going to be using tofu for the cheese today, inspired by the recent Bosch sag paneer with tofu paneer. Um, that I saw this week. Um, the recipe is similar to theirs, it's not exactly theirs, but I definitely stole their tofu paneer recipe. Um, I, I've made, I have a ton, 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 shit ton of Indian recipes on my blog. Um, big fan of Indian food, it was my go-to resource uh, to eat flavorful things when I gave up meat in the 80s. Uh, I tried with the tofu back then, there weren't a lot of I mean, it just, it, it just, it was sort of a wasteland to be a vegetarian back then, and I tried with the tofu and never really fell in love with it. And then I developed a big grudge against it, because whenever I told anybody I was, uh, didn't eat meat, they'd say, oh, well, you must eat a lot of tofu. And it's like, I don't fucking eat any goddamn tofu. Fuck tofu. I had a chip on my shoulder about the tofu. Until very recently, a friend, um, demanded that I make a tofu quiche. Uh, and I did, or tofu scramble, and I've done both. And I have since sort of had a little bit of uh, falling in love with tofu. I, I no longer say fuck tofu when people ask me about it. It's not a staple in my diet. I think soy is probably bad for you. <laughs> I have a feeling it's bad. And Anyway, it's, you know, I, I just don't find the need to use it very often, but I'm going to be using it today. So uh, let's get started with this thing here. I need to heat up four tablespoons of oil. I'm just using olive oil. If you haven't heard me say it before, one, two, three, four. Sounds like a lot. That's probably like three. Um, if you haven't heard me say it before, I love to buy my olive oil at TJ Maxx. This jug of this cloudy, raw, unfiltered um, olive oil from Italy was $13. I'm very pleased with myself. Uh, okay, I'm going to heat that up. And when it's hot, I'm going to add cumin seeds cumin seeds. Um, if you haven't watched my other Indian or ethnic recipes, then you don't know that I am a big fan of the ethnic markets. I like to go to uh, ethnic markets and get my spices in containers in sizes like this. Big, big, big ones. This, this giant thing of uh, cumin seeds, whole cumin seeds was $5.99. This giant thing of turmeric, 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 $6.99. Uh, so I really recommend going to ethnic markets and making the investment there rather than buying these little fuckers that cost like seven dollars at the supermarket. All right, this needs to be hot so they sputter. Let's see how they do. This is two tablespoons. Not quite hot enough. I'm gonna give it a little bit. Um, yeah, right. I will do it. Ah, sniffy, sniffy. So, to make the uh, paneer, okay, these are popping and fragrant. I'm now going to add a single red onion that I've diced up. And let that soften. And while that does so, I will explain what I did with the tofu. I got, I had bought a long time ago some pressed tofu that was pressed really hard and I thought it would stand up well in a stir fry and not get mushy and fall apart, so I bought it. But I didn't use it till today. I tried to use it today, this pressed tofu, and I realized that it expired in December. So it probably wasn't smart to eat it, so I didn't use it. So I got, I just used a regular block of extra firm tofu and I cut the whole thing in half and filleted it and then I placed it on paper towel, paper towel on top of it too and I put a really heavy tea kettle on it to press out as much moisture as I could get pressed out. I then tossed the, I actually whisked together some olive oil, I think it was two tablespoons of olive oil, four tablespoons of vegan parmesan or nutritional yeast and two teaspoons of salt I believe and I tossed them together and coated the tofu and then I put them on a cooking sheet on some parchment paper in the oven at 400 for 20 minutes and they came out all golden 
and bubbly and crispy and they're going to be great. All right, this is going to take a little bit to saute, saute down, so I'll make you watch me do the whole thing. I'll be back when they're soft. Okay, I'm back. These guys look good and ready. So now I'm going to add, I'm going to add, let's see, I'm going to add, this is probably six uh, cloves of garlic or maybe two tablespoons of garlic that I minced. Put that in there. I'm going to add, this is two jalapenos that I diced. I left the seeds in because I like a little heat. And ginger. I need, I like a lot of ginger in my stuff. Oh no, I guess I'll just use this. Um, this is a good two tablespoons of ginger. I'm going to stir that around. When I said earlier that I didn't think that tofu was healthy, what I meant was um, in quantity. Most of the soy in this country is GMO. I like to avoid them, even though I've got friends that think that that's just bullshit. I like to avoid them if I can. But also soy, I think, is, a, is related to cancer somehow if eaten in a giant quantity. And uh, when you have a meatless diet, it could be easy to eat a giant quantity. Or you could just be me, and you could buy a five-pound bag of edamame and eat the whole fucking thing in one sitting. Um, people who, they point to like Japan and countries that use soy, edamame, and tofu. But when you get a bowl of miso soup and the tofu in it, it's like three tiny chunks. It's hardly, it doesn't even make one of these little cubes. By the way, here's my little, my paneer. I tasted it. It's delicious. I want to eat the whole thing just like that naked. Um, okay, hold on. Let me start this a bit. Anyway, in, when you get edamame at a Japanese restaurant, you get like seven little things. You don't get a five pound bag from Costco. So I have to admit to being, having the American compulsion to just eat in mass quantity. All right, now I'm going to add some spices. I'm going to add, this is two tablespoons of turmeric. I go heavier than most people in my uh, Indian dishes. I add probably twice to three times as much of the various spices that other people do. This is two tablespoons of garam masala. This is two tablespoons of ground coriander. And this is a tablespoon of ground fenugreek. It's a really subtle flavor. If you can't find fenugreek, I wouldn't worry about it. I think you can make this dish without it. I happen to have it, so I'm going to use it. All right. I'm going to add a little water to this because the spices are so dry. Even more water. Alrighty. Let that turn into a paste. I started, this recipe uses two pounds of spinach. Spinach just reduces so insanely um, that, and I love this dish, so I just made a boatload. If you're not gonna, if you're not feeding a lot of people or you don't wanna be eating it for leftovers, or don't wanna freeze it even, then maybe cut this recipe in half. By the way, those uh, little paneer cubies that are so delicious were, I coated them rather than with nutritional yeast and salt and oil. I used this Go Veggie uh, vegan parm. It says vegan right on the bottle. I was told today that the recipe I made, the uh, eggplant parmesan mac and cheese that I made the other day using Go Veggie slices, that those, those slices may not be in fact vegan, that they may have casein, is that how you pronounce it, casein in them. Um, I didn't check the label and the labels have been thrown away so I can't double check, but it's really, it's a really perplexing thing when they put these cheeses in the vegan aisle and they're not vegan and they're dairy free, we should should be vegan. It's just a tricky business and I know this, I did a cheese review on my blog um, Mac a year ago, more. And I was all about this Lisa, Lisa Natty cheese. I thought it, I gave it a really high review because the texture was good and it melted and it seemed like mozzarella. And turns out it's not vegan. So, I mean, it's, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know who the market is for non dairy cheese that isn't vegan. I don't really am confused about that. But I apologize if I used a non vegan cheese in a vegan dish. That was unintentional, I promise you. 
Uh, and I'm so blind, it's hard for me to read. I can't read that label. I need to literally have a magnifying glass. I have a magnifying glass by my desk so I can do my checks and I can see my credit card statement because I can't see it even with my contact lenses and my glasses on top. It's really, it's really a drag. So, I mean, I can't walk around the supermarket with a fucking magnifying glass. Yes, I can. I have one on my phone. What am I talking about? I'll do it. I don't care. All right. This looks like, it's just really just creamy spices, but I want to eat it. Now I'm going to add five tomatoes that I diced. Oops, this is going to make a mess. Don't make a mess on me. Ew. All right, there we go. Oh my God, I hope this fits in this pan. All right. Yes, all right, we're gonna let this heat through. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna let it heat through and then I'm gonna add the spinach in increments. This pan may not be big enough. I may have to trade it out for a bigger pan. In fact, maybe I just do that right now. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back with my gigantic pan and with <laughs> apparently we're under assault and you hear that helicopter. Uh, I hope I'm not scandalizing people with the state of my crockery. I, uh, I, I <laughs> beat stuff up. I've had this pan forever. I've probably had this pan for 25 years and I just don't really care if it looks like ass on the outside. It still works on the inside. And that's all that mad is I got it at a kitchen supply store a bazillion years ago somewhere downtown. Now I'm going to start adding a pound, ooh, it's making a mess, a pound of spinach. I already pureed a pound of spinach with some water, so this is already a puree. You could do that, you could not do that, you could have it all all whole leaf spinach, you could have it all chopped spinach, you could have it all pureed spinach. You could make the dish with all this kind of whole leaf uh, spinach and then just use an immersion blender and blend it up that way. You could use frozen spinach. I wouldn't, but you could. Um, fresh spinach is so much nicer. So I'm going to add this as much as the pan will allow me. By the way, there again, I mentioned once in my, another uh, video that there are certain, there are like 10 or, there are certain foods that are really important to eat organic if you can afford to. Not everything needs to be organic. Some things you can just wash the pesticides off of, um, but some things you cannot, and spinach is on, is on the list of things that you should buy organic if you can. Berries, I know berries are on that list, strawberries and stuff, I know that, I think, Celery's on that list. Apples are on that list. So, just for FYI, your information. All right, this pan, because it's a little bit wonky, it isn't carrying the heat as nicely as that chrome pan does. That chrome pan hits the surface of this burner very well. If this was a flame, the flame would be hitting it too, but this little tabletop thingy is not ideal for the situation, so be patient with me. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna add some more. I'm actually gonna add two teaspoons of sugar to this. And two teaspoons of salt. One, two. Oh my god, and now my neighbor is like cutting things down in the yard. I hope that this mic is not picking up all the sound effects in my neighborhood. I know that it picks up Terry, who is as per usual over in the corner, sawing wood. Alrighty. Alright, this is going to take a little bit to cook down, so I'm going to give you a break and come back when it's cooked down. Okay, this is cooked down. So I'm going to add the pureed spinach. It's right here. All right here. Wow, it's a lot of spinach. This really is the mother load of SOG. This is a really lot. But I love it and I can freeze it. I have a secret for freezing that I would like to share with you. Let me fetch the evidence so I can show you. Okay, here's my secret. So I often make way too much food 
uh, to, for it to be realistically consumed before it goes bad, especially since I'm making these recipes often, like every other day I'm making <laughs> this much food, make a pound of pasta, make a whole that mac and cheese, that eggplant parm mac and cheese, you know, it's a lot of food. So I freeze a lot. But when you have a thing like this, I put them in Ziploc bags and I write on them what they are. This one here is a vegan tomato, vegan tomato bisque that I made in December of this year. I put them in a Ziploc bag like that and then I put them on a cooking sheet or a pizza box or something in the freezer flat and then they freeze flat and now they're just these little like vinyl records of frozen vegan goodiness. This is the Bengen Barter that I made just last month in April 2017. So I have all this food stacked up like records in the freezer and I, it's a really great way to store things and have them take up not a lot of room. So there. All right, back to the business here. So, only one last thing to add. And now you could add a number of things. You could add um, a vegan heavy cream. I've never found that. I don't, I don't know, I've never seen it. I don't know where to get it. I probably don't need to get it, frankly, because I don't make a lot of dishes that use heavy cream in, a, in an effort to, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know, stall middle age and middle age spread. So I've never been a heavy cream person anyway, but what I chose to put in here, because I had it, basically, is a cup of, this is a combination of some Tofuti sour cream and some Tofuti cream cheese. And I'm going to just dump this in there. And once this is combined, that's the recipe. I would not put the paneer in here until you serve it because you don't want it to get soggy because right now it's so crispy and, and yummy you don't want to ruin that so I would serve this with some rice and I would uh, put the sag the little the little um, paneer tofu paneers I would just drop them on top of each serving or if you're feeding more than one like you have this much food and you need to feed 10 people with it I would just put those on a plate like that and let people serve themselves their own and that is it. That is my recipe today for an Indian sag paneer with tofu cheese. And uh, so there, that is it. My name is Christine Elise. This is delightful, delicious, lovely. I'm glad you came. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll try it. If you guys try recipes of mine, I really like to get the feedback on what you think of them, how they turned out for you, how your family responded to them. If you've uh, managed to fool anybody who's not vegan into eating a vegan meal without complaint. Um, yeah, and so that's it. So please subscribe and please come back. And until then, bye.